Hello and welcome to another video. Um, this is just a brief overview before we get into the video uh, for for real. Um, the I've added a couple of fixes. I found a couple of errors with the add, subtract, and compare functions, mainly to do with the carry and the way I was handling the carry. But in the compare in the compare function, it was also um, the fact that I wasn't comparing um, the actual register against the memory um, in one in one part. I've added a breakpoint function, which is quite useful within the 6502 code. It allows us to um, put a breakpoint in um, and within the actual go, the execute function um, of the C code, uh, it checks for a breakpoint and stops the execution if it hits one, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. It's quite useful for troubleshooting. Um, the keyboard handler now works to a point. Um, the only thing that it does is it um, looks for uh, an escape key which in my uh, on in this version is the little funny backward apostrophe which is underneath the uh, the top left and underneath the escape key on my keyboard um, I couldn't get the function keys to work I wanted to get the escape and function keys to work but I think the way the terminals handling those at the moment I need to do a bit more investigation on how cursors and cursors does that um, but we've actually now got a pretty good um, set of functions that allows us to take things from the keyboard and put things to the pretend LCD screen. Okay, so first things first, if I do a disassemble uh, on uh, address 500, I've actually created an infinite loop by putting a jump instruction back to 500, so it'll go round and round and round in circles. Um, so if I say go at 500, um, that just goes, and you can see the cursor doing all sorts of weird things. But if I press that funny little backward apostrophe, it tells me I've actually done a user break, which is what I would have expected because it's intercepting the keyboard. So that works quite nicely. Um, the other thing um, I'll demonstrate at the moment is the uh, the breakpoint function. Breakpoint is just a, a variable that I've created that actually it checks for it in the execute. I'll show that in a minute, but I'll show you how it works first. Um, and what I've, if we sort of resurrect some of the code from one of the previous videos, which is so if we go FF10, that actually writes out the caption to the LCD screen there, is star 6502 EMU star. Um, now, if we clear the or reset the, the emulator, if we put a breakpoint in at FF1D, okay, which is the INX command, so before it does the increment of the X, and then we say go F, uh, FF10, what you'll notice is it's got to the point where it's put the first asterisk in, but it hasn't incremented X yet. So what we can do at this point is we can either step through it, so that the next command would obviously be the INC, uh, sorry, the INX, um, before it does the compare but equally we can make it say go again so it will run round to the point where it hits the break point and it will tell you it's hit the break point um, and it's waiting to do the i and x again so if we did a step it would make x equal to 2 which it, it does there and you can see that quite quite uh, quite clearly now that's quite a useful function because if you find yourself having to debug code or wanting to see you know uh, maybe were um, how how something's working a little bit better, but you don't want to have to step through it because you may have, you know, several lines of code and it takes forever to step through. Because if we step through that, as you can see, we did it before. It takes a lot of stepping, um, but we can hit go and um, the go will hit the breakpoint. The go will always hit the breakpoint. Now, if we want to get rid of the breakpoints, we can hit. We can just say clear breakpoints, and then we can say go, and it will finish that routine. Um, so I found that quite a useful uh, a useful little feature to have. So the way that it works, um, we've now got a, a variable in. Uh, we've now got the variable done. is part of the um, is part of this routine here. Uh, it's there. It's a, it's an integer. So I brought it in as a local variable rather than a global variable. But um, these two variables here, the, the breakpoint flag and the breakpoint, um, they're global variables and they're set up inside of um, system reset. So um, when we set a breakpoint, which we um, which we can do with the set breakpoint routine, which I wrote here, all it does is it it does checks for the tokens and it sets the breakpoint flag to one, and it just sets the breakpoint to the um, to the first string that comes after the the B command. So uh, in our case, it was the 500. Um, sorry, in our case, it was FF1D, um, and 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 all it does in the execute command is check for it. 
So it says if the breakpoint flag is set and the breakpoint equals the uh, current program counter, um, then set done to three. Um, so this is um, it breaks out of the while loop because while loop's just looking for done being zero. So at the moment there are three conditions to break out of that while loop. You can say done equals one, done equals two, or done equals three. And these um, are the uh, are what it prints at the end. So you've got a program break, a user break, or a breakpoint has been reached. Now I hit a, 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 a point in, in writing the emulator and I started looking at it thinking, okay, how much more of this emulator can I actually write? Um, without doing something useful with it or doing something a little bit more fun at least. So I thought, well, I'll come, on, come on, let's write some 6502 code. So then I thought, well, okay, what am I going to write? Uh, and the obvious thing became maths, because with the 6502 only doing 8-bit maths uh, by default, I thought, well, let's have a look at how it does adds and subtracts and perhaps multiply and divide. Start off on integer numbers, but we might probably move on very quickly from that. Um, and I decided that 32-bit was um, was probably the way to go because adding up to 255 on an 8-bit wasn't wasn't particularly great. So started looking at it with the 16-bit numbers first, um, and making sure that I understood, you know, how you can cascade the carry. So if we take two numbers here, uh, a and b. And then we take a high level language approach. We say A equals A plus B. Well, A equals A plus B is 638. So in binary, that works exactly the same. Um, I've color coded this ever so slightly. Um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't mean anything. It just so that it's easy to see the nibbles. So each four, uh, four bit nibble there belongs to E, you know, this this here, this uh, one one zero is an E, and, and that's a seven. Um, so zero plus zero is zero, one plus zero is one, and you can work this all the way down, and you get to here, one plus one, well that's two, but two in binary is one zero. So you'd put the zero down and carry one as the carry. Now zero plus one plus one is two, so zero down carry implied zero plus zero plus one is one so the end so the whole answer is zero two seven e now if we bring that out to 32 bit it just makes the number longer to the left so the, the most significant byte is here with the most significant bit being on the very left and the least significant bit being on the very right but before we go on to what we're going to do with that and how we work with it in memory let's have a just a little quick look at assembly language loops and there are two main ways of doing a loop uh, any loop in any language i suppose you've got the um the one which is called post condition or the one which is called precondition so in a lot of high level languages um seem to remember pascal or modular 2 or one of them um does uh, this thing called do until and a lot of languages like c and so on they use while something is true we've got quite a lot of that in the code that i've written um followed by the code and followed by the end now in 6502 assembler in any assembler um you don't really have these nice constructs so what you've got to do is make them up so the way you would do a post condition check is by setting up the source of the condition at the top so you would say load so in this case we're loading x with the value of four then we put a label in now that label would be a memory address in real terms but there's a load of code here then what you do is you decrement x so therefore that is basically saying x equals x minus one and you're checking whether x is equal to zero and if it's not equal to zero you go back to the start so that's what so this this is saying until condition well the condition that we're checking on is whether x is zero the alternative is to say while x isn't zero do something so we set x up as five now this is exactly the same code as the top but because we've got a precondition and we're decrementing x first and we're saying if x is zero that's that b q so branch of equal branch to end so miss out all this code otherwise do all the code and unconditionally jump back to the start decrement x and check it again so these two versions of code do exactly the same thing they just do it in a slightly different way 
Now we're going to use the um, the post condition check uh, for the code that, that I'm writing um, for the maths routines. Okay, so the zero page instructions are quicker on a real 6502. They're not in, in this uh, emulator because I haven't bothered with timings and things at the moment. We may do later on, but we, we don't know. Uh, or I'll get to the point where I look at it and think, well, add some timings. But at the moment, I'm just interested in playing with um, the ideas and seeing what I can come up with and, and making stuff do things. Um, it's kind of what it is. Um, so this is how I've represented the two 32-bit registers, uh, register A and register B. Probably should have called them something else because it gets a bit confusing with um, the accumulator. But anyway, um, so I've put register A between addresses 2 and address 5 and register B between address 6 and 9. Um, and obviously the colour coding is just there to make it obvious which register is which. Okay, so the process that I've followed uh, is exactly the same as what we looked at before. We load the uh, the X register with a 4 because there are 4 bytes in the 32-bit value. We clear the carry because we're doing an add. So that's what the carry looks like and that's what the X register looks like at that particular point. Next, we've got an implied start address. That's our start label. And that's our implied do. So that's sort of saying start. You know, this is where our start of our loop would be. So we're loading the accumulator with the value of register a minus one comma x now the minus one is kind of part of this post condition because you're checking this condition for x at the end of the loop somewhere down here then x can never equal zero as part of this loop therefore if x was equal to one the the, the most x can equal is one sorry the least x can equal is one as it goes around this loop that means that you have to point the acute you have to start one at memory address higher than where you actually want to be so when you first go around you're loading this a minus one comma x well a minus one is is this it would be this point here one one plus four is five so that's where you would be and that's exactly where you need to be so at this point, we're going to add the B register in exactly the same way. Um, and at this stage, you'll notice the carry equals 1 and X is still equal to 4. All right. Now we store this back. Why do we store it back into the A register? Well, because A equals A plus B. So when you finished, the original value of A has been overwritten. That's how it would work in a high level language. That's how it works in uh, assembly language. Uh, carry is set still and X is still equal to four. Now we do a dex. So we, re we, we take one away from X. Then we do a branch, if not equal, back to the start. Well, it's not a zero, is it? So we go back. So the zero flag is checked. No, it's not, it goes back. So the second, so the next time round, X equals three and it, it was now working on this point because one plus three is four it's working on address four for both registers it does the add it stores it back it decrements x to two carry is now zero because there isn't a carry to, to take over we saw that in the pre uh, in the previous one well, of previous slides it checks the branch goes back to start x equals two it's working on one plus two is, uh, is three working on this memory address for both registers um, it goes through the same process decrements x to 1 um, and does the BNE because it's not a 0 now the last time round where it's running this with x as 1 it's working on this memory location here and the next uh, but by the time it gets down to here there's this bearing in mind remember this is the post condition check it says decrement x to 0 branch to start if if x you know if the if the result was non-zero well the result is zero therefore it jumps down here and hits this rts this is why um you would set the this to minus one because you can't ever get x to zero on a, a post on, on this kind of check so the next thing i thought well where to put the code well 
obvious thing to do is to pop it into our pseudo rom and i might as well put it here because we've already got our original string that uh, 6502 emu string so i thought well pop it there um, and that's the actual instruction and um, the instructions that would go in there very simple and we may as well add uh, subtract uh, for 32 bit numbers just for a giggle because it's exactly the same uh, size of code and we pop that into uh, fe1a notice uh, because we're using uh, inverse borrow we're uh, we're using the set carry rather than the clear carry for uh, for a subtract that's standard 6502 because you've got a minus m minus one minus carry um it's just the way that the uh, the arithmetic and logic unit does it in the 6502 so it's the way we emulate it um here okay so let's play if we do a memory dump on um on 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 the first part of the zero page so that's address zero that's address one this is addresses two three four and five um which are the uh register a this is address six seven eight nine which is register b as per the slides now we've got at uh, fe um zero a we've got uh the code for adding those two together and dumping the result into register a uh, so that will be the a equals a plus b and if we go for fe 0 a and then we do a memory dump on that again you can see that the answer we get is 027e Okay, which is the result we got on our slides. If you think, if you uh, if you go back um, a little bit earlier, you will see that that's that's exactly the result that we got. So if we clear, um, if we clear it back, so we do a memory dump again, we'll notice that it's been reset back to what it was. Now, if we decide that we're going to run the subtract on this, so we're going to do the subtract. So fe one a. So if we say go for fe one a. And then we do a memory dump on that again. This time we've got a negative number. Now that makes perfect sense. So let's prove let's 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 prove that. Okay, so the numbers we had were two, three, eight, and four hundred, weren't they in decimal? So if we do two, three, eight, and we take away the value of four zero zero. With a bit of luck, we'll end up with a negative number. When we do, we end up with negative 162, which is kind of what you would expect to see. If we pop that into hex, what we should see is FF, 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 5E. And it's exactly what we see. So what we're getting is the correct value from that subtraction um, based upon... Uh, negative math now bearing in mind this is this is just an extension of negative a two complement negative mathematics um because we've extended it to 32 bit um so that uh the calculator has proven that that is exactly right so that's about it for this video um probably I'm going to be working on some sort of multiplication. I might even look at some floating point stuff, but it depends because um, I've got plenty of, of ideas of what I want to do. I maybe want to do some um, some more work with the uh, the LCD screen and things. Um, we'll see how it goes. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed.